All IoT transmitters require protection from internal arcing. Once an arc occurs, then the arc can continue until the voltage is removed. To prevent arcs from continuing, a crowbar circuit is used. In today's IoT transmitters, a thyrotron tube is used as the actual crowbar. The thyrotron uses hydrogen gas to create a plasma that is capable of conducting large amounts of current very quickly. When an arc occurs, there is a sudden and large increase in high voltage current. The crowbar circuit senses this and triggers the thyrotron. The thyrotron is connected across the high voltage input to the IoT, and when it is triggered, it shorts out the high voltage power supply reducing the voltage on the IoT in about 500 nanoseconds, thus stopping the arc. The real problem is the high voltage capacitor. It holds a charge even when power is cut. The crowbar shorts out the high voltage capacitor, removing its electrical charge. When the crowbar fires, it's so quick that the transmitter is not able to disconnect the power to the high voltage power supply before the circuit breaker trips. To give you an idea of the current draw during a crowbar event, the normal IoT transmitter draws around 150 amps. When the crowbar fires, that current jumps to between 2 and 3,000 amps, just for a moment, and then the circuit breaker trips, as this graph shows. The second graph displays the corresponding drop in voltage when 2,000 amps are drawn. Since the IoT is the most expensive component of the transmitter, it's important to protect it from damage. IoTs can cost anywhere from $20,000 to $40,000. Because protecting the IoT is so important, testing the crowbar circuit is vital. Many transmitters incorporate a switch that simulates an arc to test the crowbar circuit, but that does not actually test how fast the thyrotron works, which is essential. A real test of the crowbar is carried out by placing a short duration electrical short across the high voltage, simulating an arc. To carry out this test, a special device is used. This is the crowbar test device, and it works like this. It is installed inside the high voltage compartment, and the two leads are connected across the high voltage leading to the IoT. The black hose is run outside where the foot control can be safely accessed. After the transmitter is closed up and high voltage applied, the engineer steps quickly and hard onto the foot control. At the top of the piston is a metal cap that's connected to one side of the high voltage. When it makes contact with the screw at the top, the current is conducted through to the other side where another screw is attached to a thin wire, a 35 gauge copper wire. If the crowbar acts fast enough, the 35 gauge wire will not be destroyed. If the crowbar is too slow, then enough current will be able to flow through the 35 gauge wire, causing it to open. <laughs> 